Jag heter Claes Palin och är aktieanalytiker på banken och Sverige Hälsovård sektorn. Vi ska gå vidare i vår agenda och nästa bolag som ska presenteras är Sensheim och det kommer göras av vd Filip Siberg och presentationen kommer att hållas på engelska. Yes. yes, in English if it's okay. Yeah, that's yes. fine. And it's a little bit because we have a increasing share of US uh, and international shareholders. Yeah. It's understandable. All right, go ahead. Okay, nice to be here. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, so um, I am the CEO of Senzyme. Uh, we are a Swedish medical device company. Uh, we're in the midst of a technology and clinical shift happening, happening in the market. Um, we've developed <coughs> monitoring solutions to help eliminate complications and help uh, reduce drug costs of, of patients undergoing anesthesia and also in post-operative care. Um, the technology is predominantly based out of long-term research at the Mayo Clinic in the US and also at Mass General Hospital. Um, we have a business model which is classic for our industry. We, we sell monitors and then it's consumables, recurring sales of various types of sensors. Uh, we have a very uh, commercial infrastructure in place um, with focus on the US is probably our most important market. And we are on the NASDAQ main market with a strong shareholder base and um, uh, supported by clinical guidelines. So we had a report this morning, so I'll share a little bit about br brief about the company and then our Q2 highlights. So as I said, uh, we are a company based out of Uppsala. Um, with um, That's where we have our R&D and production. And then US uh, is where we have half of our team. We also have uh, distrib distribution in a number of countries and we have four key license agreements covering the Japanese, Chinese and other types of markets. Um, the background of what we're doing is that when you are as a patient undergoing anesthesia, there are three key elements that your anesthesiologist is monitoring. It's making sure you're asleep and that you are not going to remember what's going to happen. Uh, they are monitoring your pain levels and they're also monitoring the level of relaxation or, or how well you are paralyzed. Uh, the surgeon wants you to be absolutely still when you're under surgery. And as you get these types of paralytic drugs, uh, you will lose the ability to breathe. So then you are intubated or on mechanical ventilation. So these paralytic drugs that have been around for a long time have you know, been shown in research to have, um, th they're very difficult to monitor and it's difficult to determine exactly when is it safe to wake the patient? When is this drug out of your body? And if you look at the market today, there's about 160 million larger surgeries done in the world where about half of them the patients receive these neuromuscular blocking drugs or paralytic drugs. And uh, if you look at the big research out there, there's been a vast amount of patients that have had complications because they're woken up too early or they're given the wrong amount of these paralytic drugs. Um, so so there, there's a high level of, of, of complications, which is typically resulting in pneumonia or longer stay in the post-operative care. So, so what we are doing as a company is kind of leading this shift from a traditional subjective view of, okay, is it safe to now wake the patient? Is the drugs out, are the drugs out of the body? To now successfully moving this towards an algorithm-based electromyography, digital way of, of, of really patient-centered monitoring the patient. Um, and what we've did, our, our main product is called the Tetragraph system. We brought it to market a few years ago. It's FDA cleared, it's C marked, we're approved in Japan and multiple other countries. It's a system that is used in the operating room. Um, it is connected to the patient via a disposable sensor, which will stimulate you um, on a near real-time basis with small electricity impulses. And then it picks up the impulses in your nervous system and it will monitor uh, how, well, how well is your nervous system working? And then there are very defined uh, clinical guidelines stating that when 90% when of these drugs are out of your body, it's safe to wake the patient. So it's used during uh, typically the operation. Uh, and our strength here is a strong IP portfolio, long-term research in the field. Uh, we are the most accurate solution on the market, I can guarantee. And, and this is the ideal solution for, for new uh, robotic and other types of advanced surgeries. Um, the, the, the market that we're in has been, as I said, characterized by uh, subjective and other types of ways of following these patients. So since a couple of years, there's been introduced guidelines to support what we're doing. And the strongest of these guidelines came out during the winter, just a few months ago. First came the, 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 the European guidelines stating that 
every single patient that receives these paralytic drugs should be objectively monitored to make sure that they are safely woken up. And then came the US guidelines that were essentially the same as the European, independent of each other. So there's a strong underlying driver for um, introducing the types of products we have in the market. So we're really in a, to summarize, we're really in a once in a decade opportunity where we have a, an amazing technology platform which is now being introduced and where there's a new clinical variable who, which is really becoming standard of care in the world. And I think uh, we are very well positioned in this market shift. Okay, so a little bit about the, the Q2 report. Uh, we've had a, a strong uptake in our business, and I would say the, the inflection point was really during uh, this winter as these guidelines were introduced. Um, uh, our, our Q2 sales were 8.5 million Swedish kroner, um, so we had a nice growth rate, and in for the half first half year, we're also showing a very nice growth rate. The drive is really in, in the utilization of our monitors, thinking that more and more are used, that the, the, the sensors are being sold, and this you know, translates into improved gross margins. So we, our gross margin improved from 50 last year to 70% this quarter, which is thanks to consumable sales, uh, product mix, but also a very efficient product process. Um, we signed an important license agreement, which was our fourth licensing agreement in China. So one of our product lines called the Experon was out licensed to a local Chinese partner who will commercialize this over 10 years. And then we are in general in a very nice and exciting ramp up phase. Um, it's really driven by this, and, and we um, confirmed this during the summer in a, in a uh, capital markets update that our financial targets remain unchanged. Um, so just to give some highlights on the numbers, it's, it's, it's fun to see how uh, it's really started to take off. And, and consumables, again, is our most important target. And if you look at the first six months of, of sales of Tetrasense, which is this disposable sensor, it has more than quadrupled. So... Um, the trends are pointing in the right direction. We are closely monitoring our shipped base of, of tetragraphs. So there are roughly 1,700 tetragraphs out there in, in um, a number of hospitals across the globe. Um, and then if you look at the, the units of sensors, you can also tell by the graph that there's been a, a significant paradigm shift here during the last couple of months. Um, so for us, the key kind of uh, KPI here is is making sure there is a strong utilization rate of these monitors. The graphs to the, to the left here are visualizing two different graphs. The one at the bottom is looking at, if you look at our deployed accounts in the key markets, how often are the, the, the monitors used? And, and that's growing to be about twice a week. And then if you look at the, the key accounts that we define, uh, is the key accounts in the US and in certain markets where we have uh, direct access, it's nearing towards four times a week, which is nearing to kind of the goal where we established ourselves. Um, and we're also, you know, continuously growing our hospital and customer base. And what we're really targeting is the, the academic large institutions who are driving this shift. And we're really in the top of the pyramid. So we have some really uh, strong customer cases. Uh, I just showcased some here in the U.S. Um, we're also uh, monitoring all the time how are we winning accounts. And if you looked at the end of, of Q4, we had 111 hospital accounts that we had secured. And these are in our direct markets, so I'm excluding Japan, South Korea, we're ultra active in, and, and smaller distribution markets. And by the end of July, we had 151 hospital accounts. I'll come back to this number, wh what that means. And to visualize how our business model works, this is an example of a large U.S. hospital system um, in the Midwest of the U.S. We won this account about uh, roughly a year ago uh, after a long clinical evaluation. It took about three months to, to install our systems. And then you can see after about 12 months, they've already done and followed over 20,000 patients. So this has become standard of care in this hospital system. Um, revenues, you know, they are typically using this each tetragraph more than five times per week. And um, we have a run rate in this type of account of, of about 3.5 million Swedish kroner a year. So this is really a recurring business and this is what we're now duplicating in our business. Um, people ask me about this installed base. Yes, you have 1,700 tetragraphs out there. You know, why, <laughs> why aren't the numbers better yet? Be it's because to visualize there, some of these that we've sold are still in early stock. Some of them are in distribution channels. 
and some have been installed in hospitals, but they just not yet have started to, 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 to give the traction. But we're in a structured manner working to increase the utilization rates because the, the value for us as a company here is to get high-end utilization. If you have a, um, a typical tetragraph, it should at least generate uh, 50,000 Swedish kroner uh, per unit and, and year. Um, so the guidelines that I mentioned, they came out during the winter, and then during the summer, during the quarter here, there was additional um, calls out from the societies, specifically the European and the US societies, saying, hey guys, you need to start following the guidelines. So there's a real strong drive which is helping us to convince anesthesiologists and hospitals around the world that you need to shift from this kind of subjective to, to objective digital monitoring of patients. Um, we all we've, we've had a long innovation-driven clinical approach to really strengthen our case. There, there were four key studies that were published here in the last few months. Just to give a very short view, they're all in the US market. Um, one big study showed we, we, we proved our accuracy versus kind of a gold standard laboratory technique showing that you know, we are leading in this field in terms of clinical accuracy. Um, studies have been shown that by using our tetragraph system, you can actually reduce drug spend because you can optimize the way you follow the patient and thereby reduce cost of, of, of medications. Um, we brought to market a pediatric solution that was also presented and was the first study in its field to show a complete pediatric monitoring solution. And there was a study presented showing our fifth generation algorithm that this is, uh, we are the leader in the field. Um, okay, so that was a bit of on the uh, sales opportunity and research. So of course uh, we are uh, following our expense levels very closely. We are you know, trying to be as optimal as possible. We moved production from um, external subcontracting, we moved it back to our head office in Uppsala. Um, and that has, uh, we're, we're seeing a very nice shift in our, our gross margin. That was 70% in the quarter and on a rolling 12 basis just under that. So um, we're seeing the effects of our productivity. To give a little bit of a glimpse on, on operating expenses, it reduced slightly during the quarter. We increased our EBDA, still negative during the quarter. Uh, and we had roughly 42 million Swedish kroner um, at hand and a quarter. So we, um, this morning we announced that we did a direct shares issue. Um, it was uh, directed to some of our main shareholders, which is the Swedish pension fund, uh, Handelsbanken, uh, Råbur, the, the, the Kraftwerk family, and our chairman, Adam Dahlberg, was also a a main contributing into this. And we, we did this directed share issue of 56 million kroner. We did it at market price, so no discounts, and a very cost-effective and very rapid way of financing the company from our strong shareholder base. So um, approximately today, we have about 100 million shares in the company, if you want to do the math. But, but to, to comment a little bit, we have, uh, I think, a very strong long-term shareholder base. The Crawford family is our main shareholder, also represented by Adam Dahlberg as our, our chairman. And then following, we have Handelsbanken, Segula, uh, Tin Fonder, the, the, the fourth AP, the, the pension fund, and a Swedbank as, as major shareholders. So to wrap up, you know, we, we ha how do you grow this and wh what's next? And I just want to visualize that um, I, I mentioned that we today have roughly 150 hospitals running our system. They're not all yet in full use, but if I were to grow this business to have 300 active hospitals, and, and this market is um, in excess of 5,000 hospitals, which is our addressable market, and I get all of these hospitals to so each have 30 tetragraphs in each of these hospitals, which is a roughly an average number of operating rooms. And then we get the utilization rate to be four patients per week, which is where we are today in our key accounts. This corresponds to almost two million patients a year. And for us as a company, this generates revenues just under 300 million CF. So this is just how you visualize the consumable business. On top of that, you have sales on monitors, we have license fees agreements, we have various kind of partnerships that will generate this. But this is the way we're growing, and that's why we've been very firm on our outlook that we believe that our sales by 2025 are going to reach roughly 300 million CX. 
And we believe that with the type of business model we have, a long-term EBITDA margin will exceed 40%. And our strong drive is to be the market leader in what we do and have at least 10% market share in our segments. So all of this, of course, is, is thanks to a fantastic team. Uh, we have a strong international um, board as well as a management team and, and an absolutely brilliant team based in Uppsala in the US and in Germany. And uh, the board today consists of a mix of, uh, we have two professors, both based in the US, and um, we have a strong kind of mix of, of competences into this. So to wrap up uh, Sensime, I think we are a, um, we're a company that is in the midst of what I said, a clinical and market shift with a very strong leading product portfolio. This is a de-risked medical device case. We're way past regulatory challenges. We're way past clinical studies that need to prove this. This is all about adapting and following what the guidelines are saying. So it's driving up utilization, making sure we're cost effective in what we do. And um, I'm very thankful to have very strong shareholders that believe in our story. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Philip, for a nice presentation. Uh, uh, and I guess, uh, as you have shown, you have uh, quite significant growth uh, during the first half of the year. And I guess it's uh, due to the, to the change in guidelines in the, in the US particularly. But could you say anything how the awareness of these guidelines have been taken up in the hospital market? Yeah, I would say, I mean, if you, if you attend a uh, anesthesiology congress today, um, the kind of the leading discussion point is to now today is these new guidelines. This is the main topic of the for discussion. How do you adapt? What technologies are out there? How do you how do you change practice? And uh, it is a big shift changing practice. And uh, guidelines don't make things happen overnight. But but it's th these guidelines start from the top. You get the academic institutions to adhere to these new rules, and then it trickles down to the, all the hospitals. Um, so that, that is the main driver and that's what's happening. So, you know, number of tenders, number of requests, uh, the, the demand is really skyrocketing. Uh, and the request, uh, you get a lot of incoming uh, from clinics that uh, are interested in your product. Yeah, so the sales process is typically that a larger hospital system will say, okay, we need to introduce quantitative uh, objective neuromuscular monitoring. And a number of companies are asked to come in and do clinical evaluation. Um, and they will typically test a number of different products. Uh, we have a strong clinical team that comes in and helps with this. Evaluations can take everything from two weeks to nine months. Um, and what I'm noting here is that we are winning, um, mm -hmm. securing these large accounts, which I think is an amazing, uh, and it's a result of, again, the team, the product, and our absolutely leading position. And maybe you could uh, describe a little bit further about the competition and how fierce it is. Absolutely. I mean, there, there are some good competitors out there, and I love the competitors because we're all building this market together. Uh, I could say it's a mix of some large companies, such as uh, Philips Healthcare, GE Healthcare, and other products that typically have a, a more type of analog legacy technology. Mm -hmm. um, we're a number of smaller companies driving this digital shift towards what we call EMG, or electromyography. Yeah. And there, you know, I would say our main, uh, I would say friends in the industry are uh, American companies and, and others. And um, th there's so much market out there, there's so much demand, there's, there's room for, for plenty. Um, but you know, my, my sales pitch remains the same. We have such a fantastic leading product that we are the eminence of this industry. Mm -hmm. Is there a risk that uh, the first customers that you have got so far is the low-hanging fruit and it will be a little bit more complicated to reach out to new hospitals? Yeah, good point. I mean, of course, we are uh, talking to early adopters who are shifting, but, but the early adopters are now quickly turning into that everybody has to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so they are typically then listening to who is presented at these congresses, what, what research is out there, who knows this industry, and uh, ultimately, these monitors are used by anesthesiology nurses, and they need to be very attractive. They need to be easy to use. They need to be integrated into all patient monitoring systems. And I think we are in a, in a, in a good position to meet those market demands. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sales force currently, are, are you satisfied with uh, how it's structured and uh, personnel? Yeah, so we have a direct sales force covering the US market and the German market, mm -hmm. which we believe the two key markets to, to grow in. And then we've decided to have distribution partners in other countries who have local presence. And as I mentioned, then we have license agreements in certain regions where it's maybe stronger that a, a local partner 
cells or technology under their own brand, such as Fukuda Denshi, who is yeah. one of the leading in the world in Japan. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, what kind of sales activities should we expect from you during the autumn and winter? Good question. I, I hope to announce uh, a number of key one large hospital system deals that mm -hmm. we are working on. Um, so that's just, and then it's just hard work, continue to grow the business, continue to, to prove the utilization, help customers, help, absolutely, I mean, we're in this for the patients, and help make sure that every single patient out there is adequately monitored. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned uh, the, the change of guidelines in uh, the US and in Europe, but we don't see the sort of the same fast uptake in Europe. Uh, could you describe a little bit the differences between these markets? Yeah, I mean, US is more, uh, uh, I would say if I, if I look at our typical deal flow, US, a U large US hospital system will make a large tender and they will buy all at once and they will implement it all at once. While I would say the, the European uptake is a little bit slower, you typically buy a couple of monitors and you grow and you prove and you, you, you grow it. And I've had a case study that I've presented before, which is a Swiss hospital. They have grown uh, their installed base, but it's taken about three years. But now they are leveling at the same level as these US accounts we have. So it's just a s different type of uptake uh, in it. Yeah. I see. And, uh, uh, and uh, I mean, you have some uh, really nice health economic data coming out. How important is this? Uh, and do you plan to generate such data by yourself? Yeah, health economic data is absolutely important. Uh, I would say that it's, as part of these guidelines, the health economic data has already been integrated into those decisions. Mm -hmm. So we, we are not dependent on it because there's such strong evidence that adequately monitoring the patient in the operating room will reduce length of stay in the post-operative care and complications. Um, and that is already out there with strong American international studies. Mm -hmm. Do you notice any kind of skepticism towards your technology out there? I would say you know, our largest competitor still remains um, an anesthesiologist who has been doing the same way for 40 years, mm -hmm. which is subjectively understanding when is it safe to wake you close after surgery. So it's a shift where we're moving towards, and that costs essentially nothing, while we're introducing a, a, a monitoring solution with a one-time fee, but also a recurring fee for each patient. So there is a difference that we need to convince these value committees in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing that these value committees are, are now every time saying that, you know, we th there is a value case for this. Uh, so um, that's not a limiting factor. Um, the limiting factor, the, the challenge is moving and driving the change. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there is a there's an indicator in our numbers to see that the, the guidelines are now making people change. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, there's going to be a litigation risk if you don't adhere to these guidelines. Yeah, sure. uh, so people will follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, about the financing you did this morning, is it possible to give an indication how far it takes you with the current burn rate and what <laughs> you expect? Yeah. The very good question. I mean, I can just assure you that the, the board and us were working, you know, continuously day and night and optimizing the right type of financing for the company. Uh, we've had a, you know, yes, you know, if I was, I could as a CEO ask that I wanted to be very capitalized, but I think the company should have the right amount of money at each given time point. Um, if you look at our math backwards, you'll see that we had expense levels of roughly 30 million Swedish kroner. Mm -hmm. And if you add, the added cash today with the Q2 numbers, you'll, you can do the math that this mm -hmm. will take us nine to 12 months on that. But we're also having a cash flow increase from, from gross profits. And uh, um, the, it's a good question, but- um, Yeah, fully understandable. You know, You're in it. We're, we're in this phase where we're growing. And I ultimately think that as we grow, uh, there are other ways than uh, going to the shareholders and financing our working capital. So, uh, but, but my belief is, you know, we, we need to be very efficient and uh, we did a preferred, uh, we did a rights issue during the spring, mm -hmm. which we did because we believe that we saw the signals were happening. So we said that all shareholders should have equal opportunity to come in. Yeah. So we did that, uh, but uh, the director share issue we did now was a proof that 
Uh, I think that is a smart way going forward to finance the company. Uh, cost effectively and uh, I can focus my team on growing the business rather than writing prospectuses for three months. That's a rights issue to take. Sounds very good, Philip. Yeah. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you.